Welcome to Market Tuesday from the investment team in the Trust Department at the First National Bank. We're offering up this special Tuesday edition because yesterday, in observance of the holiday, markets and the bank were closed. With that said, we received quite a few important data points last week that we'd like to review before checking out what's going in on the horizon over the next couple of weeks that'll inform our views as to what's happening in the economy, specifically inflation and recession. So starting things out with Consumer Confidence Index that came on the 21st, which was much stronger than expected at 108.3 versus a 101 analyst consensus. That suggests that the Fed has not gotten inflationary forces under control, that the consumer is still very, very confident, and therefore demand is likely to remain robust. Uh, that shows that there's still more work to do on the fighting inflation front, despite the aggressive rate height cycle that we're in and the recent hawkish, in other words, aggressive comments of the Fed at their last meeting in the press conference afterwards. We got a revision to GDP for the third quarter, which was revised up to 3.2% versus a 2.9% expectation. That, again, shows the economy running much hotter than expected and likely much hotter than what the Fed was looking at uh, when they had their most recent meeting. That suggests that there is an environment in the economy that will allow them to remain aggressive for longer and potentially get to a higher terminal rate in that overnight lending rate. And in the event that that happens, the odds of us going into a recession are increased because the higher rates in the longer duration would tend to slow the economy down more quickly when it does start to slow down than uh, would be comfortable. So moving into the leading economic indicator index, that declined by 1% versus a half that was expected. And that is a pretty recessionary indication. The leading economic indicators is a collection of separate data points that collectively have some predictive power over what's going to happen to GDP. And that shows quite clearly that the data is suggesting a recession on the horizon. Personal income and personal spending tells a pretty interesting tale. Uh, that came in with incomes higher than expected. It came in at 0.4% versus expectations of 0.3, while spending came in lower than expected, 0.1% versus a 0.2 expectation. And that suggests that while incomes, which is an inflationary force, are continuing to rise more quickly than expected, uh, the spending is not rising as quickly as expected. In other words, consumers may be pulling back. Durable goods orders came in at negative 2.1% versus a one point or a negative 1% um, expectation. That suggests again consumers are pulling back because they tend to to only purchase big ticket items when you know the outlook is good. So that could be considered a pretty recessionary indicator. The University of Michigan sentiment indicator came uh, pretty much in line, not too far off of expectations. Um, Wholesale inventories built by 1% versus expectations of 0.3%. That suggests that retailers are not pulling as much inventory uh, in, in terms of new inventory, as they were. In other words, retailers who get to be in the, the first in the trenches and see what the purchasing patterns look like uh, in the demand uh, may be pulling back a little bit. And retail inventories also grew by 0.1%. So you have retailers that are potentially not buying as much uh, inventory from the wholesale and then they're also not selling as much so you're having inventory builds at the retailers that suggests lower prices on the horizon that could potentially be good from the inflation standpoint and raising inflate or raising uh, rates uh, has started to impact things we'll have to keep watch of this but uh, it also is a recessionary indication as inventories are growing ahead of a, an expected slowdown you know we got information on outlook we're getting more information on uh, manufacturing. We're going to have the Federal Open Market Committee meeting minutes coming later in the week, uh, next week. And that will tell us in good detail what the debate centered around at the table when they were having their meeting. And we're particularly interested in how uh, they express how they might act in the event that we have continued, uh, you know, difficult to control inflation 
in the same environment that we're having declining GDP or a potential recession. In other words, how would the Fed handle the stagflation scenario? We're concerned and we want to hear about that. Um, we get information about the labor markets later on in the week next week. You know, the ISM services index, which is a sentiment ind index, uh, factory orders, which are expected to show another decline that would potentially be recessionary, and then the durable goods orders, which hasn't even been handicapped yet. That will round us out over the next couple of weeks, all of the data that's either come or on the way. So with that said, um, the environment is telling us two things at once. It's saying on one hand, inflation remains stubbornly high and is likely to require a heavier handed intervention by the Fed than they have already done. It also suggests that we're on the brink of a recession or a contraction in GDP. So what does that mean? Well, most economists that have been polled on this issue are expecting us in, in the next recession to only achieve an unemployment rate of around 5%. And, you know, if you go back to economics classes in college or, or high school, even, you might remember that 5% unemployment was actually considered maximum employment in the economy for a very long time, or at least maximum sustainable on the long term employment over long periods of time. So if this next recession that we're looking at is expected to only take us from, you know, the sub 4% unemployment back up to five, which is considered normal and full employment, uh, that suggests that the recession will probably be shallower and shorter than other recessions that we've had in the recent past. On the other hand, um, this level of activity in the economy and the height of inflation and its stubbornness indicate that the Fed may have to get very, very aggressive and in doing so runs the risk of deepening any potential recession. So it will be interesting to watch what plays out and we're paying keen attention. Going into the market, starting out over a long-term view, this is a lot more comfortable than the short-term view which we'll get to in just a minute. But we wanted to highlight that because ultimately that's why we're investing. We're investing for that picture that you see now, not this picture, which represents the past year. And it's notable that last week when all of the data points came out showing high, higher than expected inflation plus recessionary conditions, that we only had this very tight little range that, that I was circling there. Um, during a holiday week, many, many market participants are away from their desks on vacation. And there's consequently a lot less liquidity in the market so that events that are big surprises can move the market much further uh, than under normal conditions. Yet that did not happen, even though we had some pretty big numbers last week. So that is an encouraging sign that there is uh, a bottoming process going on in the markets. We can't say for sure whether this low from back in October will hold. However, the market bottoming process is clearly going on when even in the face of relatively bad news, the market can hold its own. We're going to be watching that. But again, in that longer term context, as far as rates go, rates are good. And, and for income investors, you know, A-rated corporate debt, five-year paper is yielding about 4.7 and 10-year paper is yielding pretty close to 5%. And that's a profoundly good situation relative to where we were at the start of the year when, you know, if you look back, five-year paper was only yielding 1.66 and 10-year paper was yielding only 2.32%. Rates have come up a lot and that allows income investors to do better. Rounding things out and to conclude, this is a chart of the federal funds rate in the midpoint between the, the upper and lower uh, bounds that they come out with and overlaid with U.S. recessions. And you'll notice that, you know, rates have been higher than they are right now without causing a recession. It's possible that we could escape it. Although, uh, as we remain higher and higher and we get higher and higher and all of the inflation-related information seems to suggest we're going to have to, um, those odds do tend to increase that we do see a recession. Whether we see it or not, either way, over the long term, we expect markets to perform well. Over the long term, we expect our income investments to perform well. So 
if you're an investor and you have questions, uh, our advice, first of all, is to stick to the long-term plan. You know, a well-laid-out long-term plan should not be adjusted based on short-term market conditions. We're here to talk if you need us. We hope you've enjoyed this video and find its information useful. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Happy holidays.